The whole world is governed by laws, the universe, in fact. Laws. We call it the law of electricity. We call it the law of gravity. There's mathematical laws, there's physical laws, speed and velocity laws, agricultural laws. There's all kinds of laws. This one we've heard since we were small, I'm sure. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. In fact, we've probably heard it so often we could quote it. It says, whatever you sow, what? You shall reap. Fairly blunt, hopefully clear. Here's my first suggestion on the law of sowing and reaping. Don't try to beat it. You might as well try sitting on the sun in the morning. Keep it from coming up. You'll have better luck. <laughs> Whatever you sow, you reap. Now, for a fair share of my life, I'm a bit mixed up on how all this applies, among a lot of things I was mixed up on. I knew I wasn't reaping too good. That I understood. My problem was I was confused about what was causing it. Remember me with the funny list? I thought those are the reasons why it isn't working out well. And then Mr. Schof gave me the clue that helped me figure it all out. He said, Mr. Owen, I have another answer for you. There's another way to quote this law that'll show you where the problem is so you can go to work on it right away. All you need to know is where the problem is. Then you can go to work on it. So he quoted me the law another way, and I found out what my problem was. Here's the way you quote the law. Whatever you reap is what you've sown. Now I knew what my problem was. Whatever you reap is what you've sown. If you don't like the crop, who do you look up? Answer, whoever planted it. And where do you find who planted your crop? Answer, in the mirror. <laughs> what I finally learned to do come fall was to go to the mirror. That's where you go. And if necessary, you say, a few skinny carrots? I got to be unimpressed. Where were you last spring? Asleep. Didn't you read the books? Did you break your hoe? <clears throat> Let me give you seven key points to the law of sowing and reaping. Let's tick right down through the list of seven, and it'll be break time. Seven points to sowing and reaping. Here's part of the philosophy that really helped me to make some changes in life direction. Number one, the law of sowing and reaping is negative. That's number one, which simply means if you sow bad, you reap bad. Now, this is kind of third grade, but it doesn't hurt to go over the basics. If you plant thistle seeds, you don't get pumpkins. Honest, no use looking for pumpkins. John says, how come no pumpkins? Come on, John. The law's negative. That's how come. Now, here's number two. The law's positive which simply means if you sow good, you reap good. If you plant pumpkin seeds, you don't get thistles. Not from pumpkin seeds. Mother Nature won't pull tricks on you over in the corner snicker and push new thistles and you plant pumpkin seeds. She won't do that. You will get pumpkins from pumpkin seeds and the reason is because the law is positive. Now here's number three. I got excited when I found out the full dimension of this. See, you do not reap what you sow but rather you always reap much more than what you sow. So the third key word is more. You don't get back what you put out. You get back much more than what you put out. And it works both positive and negative. On the negative side, it said, if you sow to the wind, you reap the whirlwind. So you've got to get ready for that or you will be naive. But now it also works positive. If you plant a cup of corn in the spring, how much corn do you reap in the fall? Not a cup. You might as well keep the cup you got. 
Why go to all the trouble planting a cup of corn in the spring? Water it and take care of it all summer. Look after it carefully. Cross your fingers and pray. Why go through all that? Reason. Come fall. You could well get a bushel for the cup. A bushel for a cup. It's called one of life's better deals. Guy says, well, yeah, I'll figure out how that works. You could get rich. That's right. That's right. <laughs> then how come more people aren't wealthy? They don't study much sow and reap. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV. Here's number four. Fourth key to sowing and reaping. There are many ways to sow and reap. There's many ways to change your life. There's many ways to get promoted. There's many ways to move up. There's many ways for financial independence. There's so many ways to do well, especially in this country. You don't have to go without any. If we lived in the middle of Africa, the middle of India, with economic disaster all around, you might have some excuses for not doing well. But not here. There's too many ways here. There's too many libraries. There's too many classes. There's too many seminars. There's too much information. There's too many books. There's too much capital. There's too much help. There's too much training here not to do well. There's too many ways. So find you some ways. There's plenty. Here's the fourth key to sowing and reaping, or five. And that key word is anyone. Anyone can sow and reap. That's what's exciting. Anyone can. Now, the question is whether or not you will. But can is not the question. Will is the question. Anyone can. Mr. Keogh says, try my plan. I put it together. The Keogh plan. Put aside $145 a month for the next 30 years. It's a million dollars with the tax advantages. One million dollars, 30 years, Keogh plan, $145 a month. Not a bad plan. Become a millionaire. Now, anybody can. The question is, who will? That's the question. Son asks his father when his father's 50. We're rich, right? The Keogh thing? His father said, uh, no, no, we're not rich. His son says, well, the, the Keogh thing, the 145 a month Keogh thing. He says, yeah, I know the Keogh thing, but I didn't go for that. Son says, you didn't? Says, no. I picked another plan. For the $145. So what'd you do with the $145? Said, well, I bought beer and cigarettes. <laughs> see, anybody can, whether you will or not. See, that's the question. And here's a good question to ask. We are all buying somebody's plan. The question is, whose? Who's got you talked into doing what you're doing? Who's got you talked into your present plan? See, 10 years from now, you will surely arrive. The question is, where? <laughs> but see, anybody, if you want to, can go searching for a good plan, pick it, and start working it. And sure enough, as the time passes, as it surely will, five years from now, 10 years from now, then you'll be winding up wearing what you want to wear, driving what you want to drive, living where you want to live, become what you want to become. But now's the time to fix the next 10 years. And who can? Anybody. Here's number six. The sixth key to sowing and reaping. This is leveling with you now as we promised to do. There's one thing better than the truth, and that's the whole truth. And here's part of the whole truth of the law of sowing and reaping. Number six is you could lose. There are times when you just lose, no matter what you do. It's that kind of planet. You reap what you sow, yes, but. What does that mean, yes, but? Well, the farmer plants his crop in the spring, takes care of it all summer, 
loves his family, works 10, 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week, is an honorable man. Come fall, he's got a beautiful crop and he deserves every bit of it. But the day before he sends the combines into the field, a hailstorm comes along and beats it all in the ground, which means you lose. <laughs> Somebody says, well, what did he do wrong? Answer, nothing. It's just that kind of planet. Sometimes it's going to hail on your crop and rain on your parade. So you got to get ready for that or you will be naive. That's just part of the life arrangement. And don't press me why. I was not in on some of the original decisions here, so I don't know how it got set up. But there's just times, sometimes you lose. That's part of life. But now here's number seven. The seventh key to sowing and reaping. And it goes like this. It's just another way to quote the same law. And it goes like this. If you don't sow, that's just another way to quote the law. If you don't sow, what? You don't reap. You don't even have a chance. So if you looked at your game plan tomorrow, you might come to the quick conclusion. I got to get some sowing going. How true. Get you some sowing going. And remember, you've got plenty of time. You've got all the time there is. Some people spend enough TV time to make a fortune. The latest article on television watching in this country, according to the latest article, the average television is on in this country in every household seven hours a day, called the Big Seven. I asked a guy one time what his TV cost. He said about $450. I said, you forgot to look at the price tag. He said, what do you mean? I knew he was a TV watcher. I said, that television costs you, in my opinion, at least $12,000 a year. To watch it, not to own it. Owning it's cheap. Watching it is what's expensive. And I said, hey, $12,000 a year is too much to pay to watch TV. That's too much. Pay a little, but not $12,000. Thousand.